I'm Julian Halcox, I'm Professor of Cardiology at Swansea University Medical School. I'm a clinical cardiologist with an interest in cardiac disease prevention. Okay, so HDL is a complex lipoprotein. It's uh, epidemiologically, there's a very strong relationship between levels of HDL, cholesterol and cardiovascular events with higher levels appearing to be conferring protection and certainly associated with a reduced risk of uh, cardiovascular events. Now that's rather complex because often we see that individuals with the higher levels of HDL have better functioning HDL and conversely people who have lower levels of HDL cholesterol have impaired HDL function and that's because HDL is a rather pleiotropic lipoprotein. It has a number of effects. There's many proteins associated with the, the HDL lipoprotein with a range of effects on the vasculature and these include anti-inflammatory effects, antioxidant effects, it also confers uh, pr pr protective effects on the endothelium, helps with endothelial repair and perhaps even endothelium dependent vasodilatation. So when it comes to understanding the relationship between HDL, changing HDL cholesterol levels and outcome, things may not be quite so straightforward because we've seen in clinical trials that agents which have quite profound effects on HDL cholesterol levels, these uh, treatment with these agents hasn't necessarily translated into beneficial impact on outcome. And that's because if we think of just HDL as a, a HDL cholesterol as a marker of, of HDL function, that's probably incorrect. So having higher levels of HDL cholesterol doesn't necessarily mean the, that the HDL is working any better. And in fact, it's highly likely, given what we found out from the clinical trials, that the anti-inflammatory effects, antioxidant effects, are very, very important in conferring the protective effect uh, of HDL that we seem to see in, in epidemiological studies. So the challenge really is to identify agents that can influence the function of HDL cholesterol, uh, particularly anti-inflammatory, antioxidant effects, but also importantly the reverse cholesterol transport effects and think of how we may be able to do that. So just further to the idea of HDL cholesterol and its protective effect on atherosclerosis, it's important to consider the case of the APOA Milano uh, variation of, of, of APOA. Now this is a, a type of APOA that was identified in a family uh, from Italy, from Limonis of Garda, and this, uh, the, the possession of this type of APOA was associated with HDL that appeared to have extremely good reverse cholesterol transport capability. So interestingly, these individuals appeared to have very low levels of HDL cholesterol, but actually despite that they had a very low incidence of myocardial infarction and atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. And this appeared to be related to the ability of their HDL to translocate lipid from the periphery back to the liver for recycling very rapidly. And indeed when, uh, uh, when, uh, when this APOA was, was uh, reconstituted and put into experimental animal models and even in a small clinical trial, this seemed to be associated with uh, reduced, uh, reduced progression of atherosclerotic disease and indeed regression, suggesting that it's not just the level of HDL cholesterol, it's how the HDL is working which is very, very important. And the challenge will clearly be to find agents that, that really improve the function of, of the HDL rather than just the amount of HDL that's carried within, uh, the amount of cholesterol that is carried within the HDL subfraction.